In the game, Call of Duty Vanguard, one of the main characters is a female Russian sniper by the name of Palina Petrova. In that game, she uses a rifle known as the three-line rifle. What is that exactly? Well, it's actually this rifle. The term three-line rifle is actually an archaic term used to describe the Mosin Nagant here. Originally, it came out in 1891, and Imperial Russia was not using the metric system. Three line is a very old way to represent the caliber of this rifle. Uh, a more correct name for this rifle is the Mosin Nagant PEM sniper rifle. Now, in that montage you just watched, there are some key points that I'd like for you to take away. Point number one is the importance at the Battle of Stalingrad. Even though we talk about it a lot here in the West, we truly will never comprehend just how important that battle truly was. And we can never emphasize that enough. Nor can we emphasize enough the sacrifices of the men and women who died in that battle. The average Soviet soldier entering the Battle of Stalingrad had a life expectancy of 24 hours. The other important thing I'd like for you to take away from that montage is that every single photo that you saw with a sniper, the sniper was using this, the Mosin Nagant PEM sniper rifle. Now you may be familiar with the more modern version of this gun, which is known as the PU sniper, but that didn't come around until very late 1942. This is the predecessor to that. Originally, the Mosin Nagant PEM sniper rifle was started to be produced around 1938. And it was produced 1938, 1939, and 1940. However, in 1940, production of this rifle was shut down in favor of the SVT-40 rifle. The Soviet Union thought that that was the new future for their sniper program. Unfortunately, in the next year, not only did they figure out that the SVT-40 did not meet the accuracy requirements of a sniper rifle, but also Nazi Germany invaded them. So in 1942, emergency production of this rifle was resumed. And that's what we have here today, a 1942 PEM sniper rifle. This one was produced at the Izhevs factory, who would later produce rifles that they're much more famous for, the PU sniper rifle, and eventually the SVD Dragunov rifle. But this was the first sniper rifle that the Izhevs factory ever produced. And so we can see from that montage that this rifle was heavily used in the first couple of years of World War II, in 1941 and 1942 especially. And when you think Stalingrad, you should think of this rifle. One of, the, one of the men featured in that montage was a sniper you may have heard of. He was featured in the movie Enemy at the Gates. His name is Vasily Zaitsev. And he's an extremely famous sniper from World War II. And in the movie Enemy at the Gates, he is portrayed using a PU sniper. However, what we do know from those pictures is that this is the rifle he actually used, the PEM sniper rifle. Another woman you saw famous in there, but was named Ludmila Pavlichanka, and she had over 300 kills attributed to her. She earned the nickname Lady Death, and it's easy to see why. Countless men and women used a rifle just like this. And it's one of the points I'd like to hit home here, is that while Call of Duty gets a lot of rap for not always being historically accurate, and rightfully so, it's important to give them credit when they get something right. And they got this rifle right. This rifle is hardly ever featured in any movie or video games. It's very rare and very obscure. So the fact that this made it into a mainstream video game, like Call of Duty Vanguard, and especially in a historically accurate setting with our heroine, Balina Petrova, 
at the very beginning at the Battle of Stalingrad. Now, getting back to Stalingrad, well, what happened? Well, the Soviets lost over a million men in that battle. But eventually, on November 23rd, 1942, the Nazis were surrounded. You see, in the early days of the Blitzkrieg in 1941, they captured hundreds of thousands of Soviets by encirclement tactics. And finally, those tactics came back to bite them in 1942, specifically on November 23rd. The German Sixth Army was surrounded, and they had no way out. There was no escape. Now, Hermann Goering assured the Fuhrer that the Luftwaffe would be able to support their troops over the winter, but this was not reality. There was no way those troops could be supported. And of all the soldiers in the Sixth Army, about 5,000 of them only ever returned home to Germany. The rest died from war, from starvation, from disease, and from hypothermia. And it was a horrible death, no matter how they went. Now you might be fooled into having sympathy for the German Sixth Army, but don't. You see, after the Battle of Stalingrad, the Germans had roughly 800,000 losses combined with the losses of their allies, and they could simply never recover from that amount of losses. Now, one thing they could have done would be conscript the Jews and the Ukrainians of Eastern Europe to fight against the Russians. But instead, they chose to kill them. They chose genocide. They chose to send them away to concentration camps where they died of starvation or died in an incinerator. Any such sympathy for these people is strictly forbidden. Or we should never forget the sacrifice. We should never forget what the Jews and the Ukrainian civilians went through at the hands of the Nazis. And we should never, ever forget the sacrifices of the men and women who died fighting the Axis, especially the ones who wielded this, the Mosin Nagant PEM sniper rifle. You see, the Nazis at Stalingrad, they reaped what they sowed. Smirt.